Hey everyone, in this video we're going to look at ray diagrams for converging lenses. If you remember, we did ray diagrams for mirrors. Ray diagrams help us find our images by drawing rays and seeing where they intersect. There are special rays that we can draw that make it easier to find those images. So the first ray is going to be the one that's parallel to the axis and refracts through the far focal point. We talked about the fact that our lenses have a focal point on each side. So I'm going to call the focal point on the left the near focal point, and the one on the right the far focal point. So this ray just uses the definition of the focal point that your parallel rays will converge at that focal point. The second ray is going to be drawn through the center and continues in a straight line. So this is the easiest one to draw. The, if the ray is going this way, it goes to the center, it's not going to get bent. It's just hitting the lens at the exact correct position so that it doesn't get bent. And then the third ray is going to go through the near focal point, and then as soon as it hits that lens, it's going to emerge parallel. So the way that I remember these three rays, kind of like I did for mirrors, is I, I draw my line here and I say, okay, the, the focal point on the left side, oops, sorry, parallel on the left and focal point on the other side. And this line kind of represents my lens. And then the second ray just goes through the center. And then the third ray goes to the focal point on the left side and it emerges parallel on the right side. Let's look at the properties of our images that are formed by converging lenses. The first one that we're going to look at is when the object distance P is greater than the focal length F. So the rays are color coded. Our first ray is the yellow one that is parallel to the axis. It's originating from our object like all the rays. Parallel to the axis, as soon as it hits the lens, is going to bend and it's going to refract through the focal point on the other side. Notice that we always draw that straight line and that's where we're going to show our rays bending. We're not going to show them bending over here. I'm actually not even going to draw the actual lens. My little shortcut picture for the lens in a diagram is going to look like this. That's for me that signifies a converging lens because you can just imagine the rest of it filled in. Ray number two goes straight through the center and continues straight. Ray number three goes through the focal point on the near side, on the left side. As soon as it hits that lens, it's going to emerge parallel. So just by looking at where these rays intersect and are forming the image, you should be able to determine the properties of the image. One thing that you'll notice is that it's upside down or inverted. Another thing that you'll notice, this one happens to, this image happens to be smaller than the object. And then the third thing that you're going to notice is that the rays actually intersected at this point, which means that a real image was formed. So those are the three characteristics. It turns out though, that sometimes the image will be smaller, sometimes it will be larger than the object. That is going to depend on the exact position of the object. An application of uh, converging lenses are your cameras. You have an object, doesn't matter if it's far away or close up, but you've got the lens that is going to refract those rays and make them converge, and they're going to converge on the film, right? You've got the old school cameras or now everything is digital, you've got your CCD detectors here, but it's the same principle that the image is going to be formed on a screen and you have to focus the camera so that the image is not blurry. You're figuring out the exact screen location that is going to make a clear image. So what I'd like to look at now is, well, how do we know if the image is going to be smaller or larger? So I said, let's find the characteristics of an image formed 
if the object distance p is greater than the focal length, but it's less than two times the focal length. So we can just do this with ray diagrams. We have our lens is going to be this vertical line here. I'll put the little lines here to show it's a converging lens. And let's make our focal points on each side. Remember, the lens has two focal points. And then we want P to be greater than this F here, but less than 2F. So let's just put P right here. Let's put our object right here. Let's look at the characteristics of the image formed by drawing our three rays. So the first one we're going to do is we're going to do the one that is parallel to the optical axis. It's going to originate from the object. And then as soon as it hits that lens, it's going to refract and it's going to go through the focal point. To make sure that I'm drawing at the right angle, right, is it here or is it here? I'm looking at the slope of the line. I go down to and over five. So I go down to and over five, just so I know that I've drawn my line pretty well. So that's my orange ray, the first one. Then the second ray is going to go through the center of the lens here. So it's going to start from the object here and it's going to go through that center. That's going to go just like this here. Let's count our squares here. We go down two and over nine, down two and over nine. So we should be going about right here. So that means we kind of need to extend this one a little bit. We didn't quite draw it long enough to see exactly where these are going to intersect. So that's our second ray, the blue ray here. Our third ray is going to go through the near focal point and emerge parallel on the other side. So it's going to originate from the object here. It's going to go through that focal point. So it's going to hit it, the lens approximately here. And then as soon as it hits, then it's going to emerge parallel. So you always just draw it right where it hits is where it's going to emerge parallel. And I did a decent job here. You can see that my three rays are all intersecting at the same point right here. So what we have to do now is we have to draw our image there. We always draw our image starting from the optical axis here and going either down or up just to wherever those rays are intersecting. In this case, they're intersecting below the optical axis, so that's why we draw our arrow going down. So there we have it, our first ray diagram here. Just to recap, we drew our lens, we drew the focal points on each side and the distances were arbitrary for this problem, as long as we picked our object distance to be greater than the focal length. And then we went ahead and drew the three rays, and where they intersected was our image, so let's take a look at the properties of this image. The image is going to be real because the rays actually intersected. The image is inverted. It's upside down. And you can see that it is bigger than the object. It's more than two squares tall, while the object was only two squares tall. So it turns out that if the object is between f and 2f, that the image is going to be bigger. If the object is anywhere further away than, than 2f, that's when the image is going to be smaller. 